Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today we have an amazing lesson planned. We're going to be going back to our cross-platform native plugin playlist, which we haven't touched in a while. And I'm going to show you how to implement a store with in-app purchases for a mobile game. But before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. All right, so first things first, we want to open up our MP settings. And so I'm going to go up to Windows, Voxel Buster, Native Plugin, and then Open MP Settings. We then want to select application settings and in here we want to make sure that we have the billing option enabled. So once you turn that on you're then going to need to save your application settings and once you've done that we're then going to go over to the tutorial documentation which I've linked to in the description below. From here we want to make sure that we are in the billing tutorial and on this first page it just talks about their plugin and what's essentially possible with their billing options. And so we're going to go to the next page and on this page it talks about the difference between consumable and non-consumable products. Consumables are products that can be purchased more than once by the player. These are things like power-ups or in-app currencies. And non-consumables are products that can only be purchased once by the player. This includes things like remove ads and as well character skins. And so now that you know the difference, let's go on to the next section, which is on registering with the store. And in this section, there's two parts. The first part talks about how to register with the Apple App Store for iOS, which we'll talk about in a later video. But for this video, we'll focus on Android, which is the second section on how to register with the Google Play Store. And so if we follow these seven steps under creating products for Android, we'll be able to create any in-app purchase that we need for our mobile game. And so the first step says that we need to go over to our Google Play Console. So once you've logged into your Google Play Console and you can see all of your apps, you're going to want to select the app that you want to create in-app purchases for. You're then going to want to go over to Store Presence and then In-App Products and select Manage Products. From here, we're then going to click on this blue button that says Create Manage Product. And this is where we get to register each product. And so I'm going to fill out all of this information. You're going to need a product ID, which needs to be unique for this in-app purchase. And so I like to put the name of the game that I'm creating this in-app product for, and then have a dot, and then have the product name. We then need to add in a title. And at the moment, I'm only going to be creating one in-app purchase which is going to be for removing ads. And so the title is going to be remove ads and then I'm gonna add in just a little description. You then wanna make sure that you set the status of your product to active. You then need to specify a price for your product. And so I'm just going to list mine at $2. Once you've set the price, we can then save this product by clicking the blue save button down at the bottom of this page. Once you've finished registering your product, we can then go back to the documentation for the native plugin, which is on configuring the plugin in your Unity project. Now this section talks about everything that we need to do in the billing settings of our native plugin. And so let's go back to Unity, and then inside our native plugin, I'm going to go back outside of our application settings and then select billing settings. In here, we need to set our products array to be the size of however many products we've registered. And so I'm going to set it to one. And then we need to fill out all of the information for our products. So I'm going to go over the Google Play Console and I'm just going to copy the name and the description. We then need to specify whether our product is a consumable, which it is not. And so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I'm then going to expand product identifiers and we're going to set this array to one because we've only registered with Android Store. We need to set the type to Android, and then I'm gonna go back to our Google Play Console, and back in the dashboard where it lists all of our products, we can see that next to each product, we have the product identifier. And so I'm gonna copy that and paste it in to this field here. Now, of course, if you have more than one product for your game, you're gonna to need to increase the size of your products array and fill in the information for those other products. Now there's one last thing that we need to do inside our billing settings, and that is we need to set the public key for Android. To do this, we're gonna go back to our Google Play Console, and when we're in the dashboard for our specific application, we need to go over to Services and APIs in the left-hand column. And right here, up at the top of this page, it says Licensing and In-App Billing, and then it says your license key for this application. And so we wanna copy this big long string 
and then go back to Unity, and we're going to paste it in right where it says Android Public Key. We're then going to go back to the documentation, and we're going to select the next section, which is on implementing the features. And right here at the top of this page, it has a little diagram where it explains how this plugin communicates with the Google Play Store to authorize billing. But we're going to scroll down past that to the next section, which is on getting information about products. And they have a little snippet of code that we're going to copy, and then we're going to go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we need to create a new script for our store. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder, and then I'm going to create this new c -sharp script, and I'm just going to call it store. We're then going to open it up, and inside here we're going to paste in this code. Once we paste it in, you can see that we're now receiving an error where it says MP settings. To fix this, we're just going to click on MP settings, and then hold alt and press enter, and we're going to select the first option, which will add in the using voxelbuster.native plugin namespace. Now this request billing products function is a public function, which will be calling to request all of the products from the store. You can then see we have an on enable and an on disable function where we are registering the on did finish products request function to the callback event of successfully receiving the products from this other function. And then down at the bottom, you can see we have our on did finish product request function, which handles the information that it receives. But once we've pasted in these functions, let's add some code of our own. The first thing I'm going to do is add in a serialized field of type game object, which I'm going to call store panel. And then I'm going to create another public void function, which is going to be called open close store. This is going to be a function that we compare to a button whenever we want to open and close the store panel. And so inside this function, we're going to call store panel, then dot set active, and we're going to set it to the inverse of its current status in the hierarchy. So store panel dot active in hierarchy, and we're going to add an exclamation mark out in front. After this, let's go back to the documentation, and we're going to scroll down to the next section on making a purchase. In here, there's another little snippet of code that we're going to copy, and we'll go back to Visual Studios, and we're going to paste this function in down at the bottom of this script. Now, this function is pretty straightforward. You basically pass in the product that you want to purchase, and then it checks to see if this product has already been purchased, if it's a non-consumable. And one thing with their documentation, it's a little out of date. This is product purchase function has been changed, and they haven't changed it in the documentation. But basically it requires a billing product parameter instead of a string. And so all we have to do is get rid of the product identifier string and just pass in the product. Now if this product has already been purchased, then it will just return out of the function. But if it hasn't, then it will try processing that purchase. Next, let's go back to the documentation. We're going to scroll down to the next section and copy this segment of code. We're then going to paste this code down at the bottom. And this on did finish transaction function is essentially a callback function that informs us that the purchase has been successful. So once we've pasted in that function, let's go back to the documentation. We'll copy the next segment of code, which is to replace the on enable and on disable function so that our on did finish transaction callback function is being registered to the event of a successful purchase. And so we're going to go back to our Visual Studios and we're going to paste over our current on enable and on disable function. All right, so from this point, I've actually gone ahead and added in some additional code, which I'll walk through right now. All right, so the first change that I've made is I've added in some new variables. The first two new variables that I've added in are of type billing product, and I've made them arrays. And the first one I've called my products, and the second one I've called requested products. The next variable is a serialized field, which is of type game object, and this is also an array, which I've called store buttons. The next change that I made was I've added back in the start function. And inside this function, we are setting our my products array equal to mpsettings.billing.products. This will get all the products that we've added into the billing settings section, and it'll save them into an array. And then next up, I'm calling the request billing products function. 
Then as I scroll down, you can still see that I have our open closed store function and our request billing products function. We then have our on enable and our on disable function. And then right here is the next big change, which is inside our on did finish product request function. And inside this function, inside the else statement, the first thing that we're doing is we're saving our reg product list parameter into our requested products. And then we have a double nested for loop. The first one is we're looping through the length of my products. And the second is we're looping through the length of requested products. Inside this double nested for loop, we're checking to see if there's a match between the product identifiers of both our my products array and our requested products array. If we do find a match, then we want to set active the I index of our store buttons array. This will make it so that if we decide to disable some of our products on the back end in our Google Play console, the buttons for those products will then never be enabled. The next big change that I made to this script was I created another public void function which I've called buy, and this function has a parameter of type int called which item, and we're just simply calling our buy item function, and we're passing in the which item index of our my products array as the parameter. This function just makes it easier because we compare this function to a button and just set one single int value in order to create a purchase button. Now the last change that I made to this script is found inside our onDidFinishTransaction function, and that is inside all of these if statements I created a switch statement where we're checking to see what was sent back to us. And so inside the switch statement I have transaction, which is our parameter, and I'm checking for the product identifier. You then need to create cases for each product identifier that you've registered. And so I have case and then I have the product identifier for our remove ads product. And inside each case, you need to have a segment of code to handle the rewarding of that purchase. And so for removing ads at the moment, I just have a player prefs being set where I'm setting the remove ads player pref equal to one. Now this segment of code for my example at the moment is just a placeholder because using player preferences for things like in-app purchases is actually a very bad practice. And that's because player preferences aren't very secure and they can be deleted by uninstalling your app or clearing the cache data of your app. And so it wouldn't be very fair for a player to purchase something like remove ads and then decide to uninstall your app for a period of time and when they come back they no longer have that purchase and they have to watch ads again. And so I'm going to replace this line of code once I've implemented the cloud saving feature of the native plugin. But once you have all this script, let's go ahead and save it and go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, you're going to want to create an empty game object and then attach your store script to that object. You then need to set the variables. For the store panel, I actually don't have a store panel for this game at the moment but you would just create a UI panel and then you would attach all of the buttons for each product onto that panel. And you could even have them in some sort of grid layout group with a scroll rect. The next variable that you need to set is your store buttons array. And so since I only have one product, I set the size to one and then I set the first element to my remove ads button, which is located right here. And once we've added these buttons to our store buttons array, we can then go to each button and disable them in the hierarchy. Now the next thing that you would need to do is you need to set the on click event for a button to enable your store panel. And so let's say instead of remove ads, this button was open store. In that case, I would drag in my store game object to the on click field. And then I'd use the drop down menu to go to store and then select open close store. If you then have a close button on your store panel, you could then add in that same function for that button and it would disable your store panel. Next, you'll then go through each button for each product. And so in this case, I have my remove ads button and you'll wanna drag in your store game object to the on click field. And then you'll use the drop down menu to go to store and then select the buy int function. You'll then need to set the integer value of this function so that it matches the order of your products in your billing settings. But once you've done all of this, you should then have a working store 
with the cross-platform native plugin. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my project and I'm going to upload the APK to an alpha track in my Google Play console. And I have to do this because the in-app purchases won't work unless it's an official version of your game through the App Store. And then once it's available on my device, I'll screen cap it and I'll show you that it's working. All right, so here I have my game installed on my phone and the remove ads button is now active. And so when I click it, you can see that there is a Google Play pop-up that says remove ads and you know that it's working when it has the correct price listed. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to implement the billing options of the cross-platform native plugin in order to create a store for a mobile game. If you like this video, then make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server and receive help from our community. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.